a city 10,000 fathoms beneath the sea. It's quite beautiful. I'm glad you feel that way, because you'll be staying here for the rest of your natural life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your seahorses, Captain Nemo. Although, in case of a global cataclysm such as nuclear war, a solar flare, or YouTube shutdown, humanity, those who have not taken off to Mars at least, may simply have no choice but to move underwater. Underwater cities, of course, are insanely beautiful, and the rent there is definitely cheaper than in Manhattan. However, the thought alone of setting up an underwater accommodation raises questions and doubts that pour in like shrimp from Forrest Gump's nets. How are we going to breathe? What will we eat? Domino's is unlikely to deliver a kilometer deep. Is there electricity? Is there internet? Who will be the mayor? SpongeBob? Can't fool us, Captain. A special brain frame marine squad equipped with scuba masks plunges into the depths of the ocean to see everything with their own eyes. We will visit the Japanese Atlantis, Ocean Spiral, and learn how to harvest the energy of the sea. We'll climb the underwater skyscrapers and understand how they can clean the ocean. We'll find out whether it's possible to build an underwater city in Canada and what James Cameron has to do with it. Well, already hooked? <laughs> Then let's start! Don't forget to like the video while the sharks are still far away. Life on our planet may not be all sunshine and rainbows, but think how complicated it can get if warhead enthusiasts sooner or later launched hundreds of nuclear missiles at each other. Or if another asteroid crashes into Earth, like the one that destroyed Bruce Willis's career. Or when there are so many people that there isn't enough land for everyone. It would seem that you can hide in an underground shelter from all cataclysms and the best traditions of Fallout. But there is one problem. The presence of water, which makes up 80% of our bodies and without which we won't last even a week. What if the source in the bunker runs out or becomes contaminated? And where can we find plenty of water? In the ocean, of course. A good way out is to go down, not under the earth, but under the water. It's a blessing that 71% of our planet is covered with it. And you know what? Looking at modern technology and engineering concepts, the city of Rapture from Bioshock no longer looks all that fictional. Would you like to live in an underwater city and why? Write in the comments. Well, we've got some backstory for you. Talking about the depths of the sea without mentioning the name of Jacques-Yves Cousteau would be a crime for which you'll be hanged on a sail yard. Cousteau was a French naval officer, a great explorer, oceanographer, and director. And he was the one who invented the scuba gear. In addition to stirring up the interest of the public and scientists to the ocean, it was him who first began to speak seriously about the possibility of building an underwater city. Cousteau was so keen on exploring the ocean that he created the famous Conchelf, a series of underwater houses in the 1960s. Thanks to him, other researchers were able to live underwater for several days and sometimes weeks in a row. With the development of technology, Cousteau's underwater homes became even better. The Conchelf projects 2 and 3 allowed six ocean explorers to live comfortably underwater at the depth of about 100 meters from the surface. Many were inspired by Cousteau's efforts to colonize the ocean. In 1970, a team of ocean researchers in the United States spent more than 10 days under the Caribbean Sea. And today, several underwater research laboratories are already operating around the world. But no matter how successful Cousteau and his team were in the construction of underwater housing, life in it was still not much different from everyday life in the barracks. There's very little space, food supplies are strictly limited, the only entertainment is Cousteau's silt-covered jokes, you can't leave without a mask. What a great shelter option during a global pandemic. If you want to know more about how our life will change after it, click on the pop-up above, but only in gloves. In general, life in an underwater research laboratory is still a challenge, and not everyone is ready to spend the rest of their days surrounded by bearded men and jellyfish. So let's see what else modern science can offer us. Since 1954, Japan has been continuously attacked by the huge fire-breathing pangolin Godzilla, at least in the movies. In any case, the Japanese have long been concerned about population growth and a lack of resources, and most importantly, places for people to live in. 
To resolve the issue, the descendants of the samurai did not ask somebody else. As usual, they did everything by themselves. Shimizu Corporation first introduced the concept of the Ocean Spiral Project in 2014 with Tokyo University and the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology and spent the following years developing this idea. Ocean Spiral is a habitable settlement on the surface of the water that uses the resources of the ocean for complete self-sufficiency. The conceptual metropolis consists of two main elements. The first one is a spherical city with a diameter of 500 meters. The tower contains houses and jobs for 5,000 people. The second element is a spiral structure that connects this sphere to a base station at the bottom of the ocean, 2.5 miles from the surface. This element is designed to provide the city with the necessary resources, such as energy, fresh water, and food. The spiral will generate renewable energy using the Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion OTEC. This process uses the temperature difference between the colder, deeper seawater and the warmer, shallow seawater to power the electricity generator. Drinking water will be produced in a process called desalination of the reverse osmosis membrane, which uses high pressure to clean seawater, a process that naturally occurs at lower ocean depths. Food for the inhabitants of Ocean Spiral will be provided by large underwater farms where you can grow fish, crustaceans, and aquatic plants. In addition, the base station at the end of the spiral will be used for excavation and extraction of natural resources from the seabed. Shimizu Corporation believes that in the future, it is possible to convert carbon dioxide to methane using microorganisms that live on the seabed. This can provide additional energy for the city. It's estimated that the construction of the project will take five years and cost approximately $28 billion. The company claims that by 2030, the spiral may be ready for people to live in. But what if there are no more places in Manhattan, but you want to live in a skyscraper? There is a solution! The Lady Landfill Skyscraper is a concept developed by Milorad Vidović, Elena Pukrovic, and Milica Pilcher from Serbia as a salvation from a huge accumulation of waste that threatens the oceans of our planet. For example, the Great Pacific Garbage Spot, a huge floating waste pool in the North Pacific, is thought to be almost twice as large as Texas. Although there are a number of experts saying that these are all fairy tales, but we will discuss this some other time. So the design of the underwater skyscraper resembles a floating inverted Eiffel Tower and is divided into three sections, a garbage collection section, a recycling section, and an upper section with residential and office premises. The first two sections are completely underwater, the first of which collects garbage using a flexible membrane and stores it for processing in the upper middle section. Subsequently, the garbage is processed into gas, which is purified and used to generate clean energy. The gas purification process also produces other byproducts that are also beneficial, including commercial salt and sulfur for fertilizers. Energy can also be extracted from the ocean itself in the form of waves and thermal energy obtained from the temperature difference at different depths, just like in the Japanese ocean spiral. To keep the tower afloat and balanced, the structure can receive or discharge water, depending on the amount of garbage collected. The design of Lady Landfill received an honorable mention at the 2011 E. Volo Skyscraper Design Competition. But whether states or private companies will use the garbage islands is still unknown. Apparently, they're waiting for our entire continent to become a garbage island. If the trend with the ocean pollution with all sorts of rubbish like garbage and cruise liners for the elderly continues, the water world will turn from a cinema failure into a terrifying wet reality. And Kevin Costner will not come to the rescue. Instead, Zigloo Company from British Columbia promises to help. Its gyre project is a floating ecological building with two roles, a research station and a coastal resort with shops, restaurants, gardens, and recreational facilities. Powered by the sun, the wind, and the ocean, gyre will offer clean, emissions-free stays for tourists and explorers looking to better understand the ocean ecosystem. The gyre is essentially an inverted underwater skyscraper plunged to a depth of 400 meters, much like the Empire State Building, on the contrary. Four arms extend from the central spire, 1.25 kilometers in diameter, and serve to support the structure, and also create a safe inner harbor and port large enough to accommodate the largest ships in the world. 
The area of the central tower is 30,000 square meters, and each floor is smaller than the previous one and reaches up to 600 square meters at the end. The total area of the entire structure is 212,000 square meters, or about 40 football fields. Powered by fully renewable energy, the Gyre is a standalone, zero-emission development. Vertical wind turbines will be mounted on top of the giant's four arms, collecting ocean wind. The entire structure will be glazed with translucent solar windows, and solar panels will be used as shading on footpaths. Submarine turbines will generate energy from currents when the gyre is anchored, and then they will act as engines when the gyre is in motion. Yes, this floating city will be able to move, which is very useful. It can sail to a safer place. In addition, rainwater will accumulate in the central circulation and collect in storage tanks at the bottom of the spire. It was way more complicated for Kevin Costner to get fresh water. Since we got to Hollywood, it's time to remember James Cameron. Did you think we've forgotten? We're a brain frame, we don't forget anything. So don't you forget to click the bell. A Canadian diving expert and inventor, Phil Noyton, developed and built extremely powerful wetsuits and submarines over the past decades. His projects are used around the world, and NASA has been working closely with him for over 25 years. Everybody needs Phil. He was always especially needed by James Cameron, whose obsession with the underwater world is widely known. In the 1980s, Phil helped Cameron shoot The Abyss, a film about the underwater world. A few years later, he fiercely argued with the director on the set of the Titanic. Cameron's perfectionist attitude is ironically far from perfect. Now, at 78 years old, Noyton wants to realize the dream of his life, the first human settlement on the seabed off the coast of Vancouver in the Pacific Ocean. Vent Base Alpha is the name of the planned deep-sea camp that can accommodate hundreds or even thousands of aquanauts. If the tests go well, Noyton wants to quickly build a base and go live underwater. According to him, several people are already interested in moving to the seabed with him, including, you guessed it, James Cameron. Although life underwater is associated with many dangers, Phil's ready for them. The unsinkable Canadian has developed a mobile wetsuit that frees divers from one tedious but important process, decompression. In addition, in the cylindrical living rooms that Noyton planned as dwellings for his underwater paradise, the pressure conditions should resemble those above the water. And the light from the artificial sun will help new sea creatures cope with the dark depths. Noyton intends to generate the huge amount of energy needed for his project from hydrothermal sources in the Pacific, which are abundant off the coast of Vancouver Island. The temperature difference between the boiling hot water of the so-called black smokers, hydrothermal springs emitting black water, and the Pacific water around them, 150 degrees Celsius, can start an armada of engines. Phil is confident that Vent Base Alpha will be a colony under a giant dome with a huge generator that uses the power of water to extract oxygen, grow crops, and maintain life support systems on the ocean floor. And even though it sounds like science fiction, we once burned people for claiming that the Earth is round. So, when will humanity move to the bottom of the sea? In truth, it's unlikely in the foreseeable future. Although, in order to build cities underwater, everything would seem ready. We can turn ocean water into drinking water, we can build underwater structures that don't leak, and we can provide the underwater cities with autonomous energy and food. The question of price remains. A square meter underwater will be clearly more expensive than on the surface and only few people are ready to say goodbye to the sky and the sun. Or maybe the main reason is that something or someone deliberately slows down technological progress, or that we have studied space much better than the oceans, and who knows what awaits us in the depths. Brain Frame Out